I know many of you have idea about the IELTS reading. But again, I'll try to utilize some basic knowledge in the beginning and then I'll jump to the advanced knowledge. I've divided the session into four parts. The first part, I'd be sharing, I mean, at least how to get a band six, some tips and tricks. Uh, in the second session, I'll discuss about the speed reading, which is an essential part of IELTS reading, particularly. And in the third part, I'll discuss the true false not given. I know many of you have confusion, many of you have um, difficulties in solving that particular part. And in the last part, I would discuss matching information. So the question is, why IELTS? I mean, why as a test you consider IELTS? IELTS is designed to help someone work, study, or migrate to a country where English is the native language. And you must be able to demonstrate a high level of English language ability. So that's why I believe you need some sort of preparation. As you see, 379 million people around the world are using English language. And this is the third most spoken language. Um, almost 11,000 employers, universities, schools, and immigration bodies use this. And this is essential for job opportunities. Um, in particularly English-speaking countries. And um, of course, if you would like to integrate yourself into the community, this is an essential part. So, why the reading module? I mean, there are, as you know, there are four different modules in IELTS, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So why reading? So this would test your reading ability so that you, you get to know the general message the main idea and in fact this would test your you know reading skill in a sense that so that you can grasp the detail you know you know the texts are large enough there are three different passages passage one two and three and large enough and then you need to grasp the detail in a very short time like in 15 minutes or maybe 20 minutes Within that time, you need to find the relevant facts. You need to recognize and understand arguments, opinions, and purposes. So these are the skills would be tested. So these are the 14 different types of questions that come in your eyes reading. A variety of question types are used, chosen from the following multiple choice, identifying information, identifying the writer's view or claims, matching information, matching headings, matching features, matching sentence endings, sentence completion, summary completion, note completion, table completion, flowchart completion, diagram label completion, and short answer questions. So how does it look like reading passages? passage one, passage two, and passage three. So in the academic, you would be given three different passages, passage one, passage two, and passage three. And as you know, by this time, they would be incrementally difficult. One another thing, if you go for GT, general training, then you will have five different passages, okay? five different passages. The first four would be easy or simple or small text. And the last one would be a difficult one, the most difficult one, I would say. Okay. So a passage may look like this. Okay. As you see the heading of the passage, I guess you can see it. If you have uh, a laptop or a computer screen, if you use a phone, then this might be very small. So the heading is Raising the Mary Rose. Fine, this is just a heading. And it's taken from the Cambridge book, the real Cambridge book. And so you see there is an instruction. You should spend about 20 minutes on question 
1 to 13, which are based on reading passage 1 below. And there's a passage. So this is a kind of academic one. And this is a kind of GT or general training version, which would be, I would say, simple in terms of the difficulty level, the language level. It would be simple, and there would be around, ar around seven to eight questions. Let's jump to the other one. This will look like your computer delivered test or CDIS. On the screen, you would see on your left, the text, and on your right, the questions. On the left, you would see the text, and on the right, the questions. This is different from the pen and paper test, okay, paper-based testing system. So since this is a computer aided or CDILs, computer delivered test, on the screen you need to see it. You don't have the chance to flip the pages. So on the screen you need to see it. So on one hand you see, or on your, on your left you would see the text, and on your right you may see the questions. You're going to see the questions. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So the question I have, are the IELTS reading papers the same for both academic and general training? So now you get the answer properly. The style of question, the question type, for example, MCQ, sentence completion, heading matching, true, false, not given, are also the same for both GT and academic version. Okay? So this is the, or these are the similarities. The only difference is the type of text or the type of the text you'll be given. This is to reflect the different expectations and motivations of both types of candidates okay so the expectation or the expectations from the academic what do you think what is or what are the expectations so that in your university you can understand you can read long tests you can understand long text and you can complete them you can read books okay materials research papers yeah, you can consume a lot of reading. So that's the expectations um, and the motivations as well. So on the academic paper, there will be three long academic texts that are similar to the type of reading you might expect at university. Yes, that's the expectation. The readings are taken from academic journals, magazines, books, and newspapers. On the other hand, on, on the general training paper, you'll be given a mixture of long and short texts of a much more general nat nature and some related to work or social situations. Okay? The readings are taken from notices, flyers, schedules, timetables, documents, and also newspapers, instructions, and manuals. Okay, so let's jump to the next slide. Am I ready for the test? So you may ask this question, okay? You can ask this question to yourself. Are you ready? I mean, am I ready? Okay, so in that case, there are some checklists, okay? For example, the first question is, what is my reading understanding? Yes, that might be one question. What's your reading understanding? So I would say whether you understand newspaper, dailies particularly, that is the easy task or available material, available content that we can discuss. For example, 
daily star if I consider. So how long does it take to read that, whether you understand most of the part or whether you understand only 10% or 20%, whether you struggle a lot. Okay, so these are the questions that you can ask. What is my reading understanding? Okay, that is the first question that you can ask. You may ask to yourself. Do I stop frequently at the unfamiliar words while reading the newspaper or the dailies? I mean, particularly English dailies, of course. Whether you stop frequently, whether you struggle, face difficulties at the unfamiliar words, do I struggle to get to the meaning? Yes. And do I struggle with the long or complicated sentences? What is my reading speed? Yes, that's a very specific question. And the last one, can I complete a task within the time? So whether you can complete three different texts within an hour or that, that take more than an hour. So if you can complete them in, in an hour with accuracy, then I would say, yeah, you were ready for that. But before that, you can check in this way. You can ask these questions and you can get an answer, I guess. Okay. So what skills will be tested for a high band? What skills will be tested? Completing a diagram, table, or summary. Okay? Whether you can complete a diagram, table, or a summary after reading a text. Tell the difference between main ideas and supporting details. So... That is another skill. And find specific information. Identify the writer's opinion. Follows key arguments. And identify the writer's purpose. So these are the skills will be tested um, and particularly for a high band. So if you have a question, how can I get six? That I can tell you now. What should I do to get a band six? For a band six, you should be aiming to get around 24 out of 40. So there are 40 different types of questions, 40 different questions that come in your ass exam. So you need to answer at least 24 correct out of 40 to achieve a band six. Okay, fantastic. So tips for a band six. Yes, if you are preparing for your IELTS test, I would say, particularly for the reading, I would say read for pleasure, read for fun, and a little every day, okay? So that not only will improve your reading skills, but also will improve your vocabulary, okay? The stock of words. And never skip the instructions. Read them very carefully. The reading test is more of a vocabulary test, interestingly, than a reading test. Okay? That's my personal opinion. And many experts would say this same. To prepare this, to prepare the test, I advise you to do three things. Okay? Read, take notes, and learn the new words with synonyms. If you are preparing now for your test and if you have around like three, four months. So I guess this is one thing that you can do. Reading, taking notes, and learning new words every day. And taking notes and learning them again. Okay? Skim reading and scanning. This is a vital part of IELTS reading. Or I would say in any reading. This is very important. But you have to be skilled on this particular thing. Don't leave any questions unanswered. Okay? Don't leave any questions unanswered. Because there is no negative marking. Since there is no negative marking, answer all of them. And for band 9, okay, these are the tips that I can give you. Ignore anything you already know about the topic. I mean, your background knowledge might not help 
in some cases. Rather, it might distract you or give you some confusion if you use your background knowledge. Okay? But if you can balance it, then it's okay. Reading slow and fast. Sometimes you need to read slow, sometimes you need to read fast. For example, if you are looking for a particular answer, you need to scan and you read fast. And then as soon as you get it, you get the particular information. You reread, you match, you become slow now. Okay, that is reading slow and fast. Focus on the ideas, not the words. Yeah, this is a major aspect that we make. In most cases, I would say we make a mistake that we focus on the words of the questions. And as soon as we need to find the answer, we try to find them or that particular words. And, uh, you know, it's full of synonymous words and paraphrasing. So it's unlikely that you will get them or the same words. So understand the ideas, focus on the idea or ideas. Some students find reading the questions first and then the text is the best way. Other students do the exact opposite. Yes, we will discuss this particular point as soon as we start solving questions. Then I'll tell you what to do. And of course, you need to use context. What we do generally, we jump into the text, we jump into the questions, we jump to find our answers ASAP. So what happens? Without understanding the context, that might be misleading, I would say. Grammar will also help, yes. Today I will, in fact, show you how grammar can help you finding your answers. Improve your reading speed, that is the crucial aspect that I'm going to discuss in my second part that I mentioned earlier. Learn paragraph structure and the overall reading structure. Yes, learn paragraph structure and the overall reading structure. If you understand the structure of the reading, I would say this is a key point. This is a key thing. You know, most of the IELTS candidates never focus on the structure of the passage, structure of the paragraph. For example, there is a topic sentence or the main idea in most cases are put in the first sentence, I would say in 99% cases. And then there are supporting details. So these supporting details or the supporting sentences follow the main idea or the main sentence or the main topic or the topic sentence. So there's a structure of the paragraph. There's a structure of the, the passage so, or the comprehension that you need to understand. And that is a great way to understand IELTS reading. My dear friends, that is the end of the first part.